All right, so this is a crash course on CCNA. It's going to be quick and intense, and therefore, I would request you to grab a cup of coffee and let's jump right into it. When it comes to the networking industry, we know Cisco is the leading company and undoubtedly it has been at the top for a long, long time. However, at the beginning of this course, we're not interested in this, we're not interested in this, and we're not interested in this as well. Right now, what we're interested in is networking. I want your focus to be on networking. If you're a college student who has just passed his college or is still studying and is looking to get into networking and wants to understand what the heck is going on and what should I do now? So if you're someone looking to get into networking, CCNA is your best bet. And it is undoubtedly the best certification to go for when you want to get into networking. So I hope down the line you become a part of Cisco, you become certified as well. And not just at the associate level, but at the professional level as well and go for CCIE as well. But right now, I want your focus to be on networking completely inside out, only and only networking. All right. And now in order to understand networking, we need to understand what networks are. So let's talk about that. All right. So a network is defined as a collection of interconnected devices that can communicate with each other to share resources and information. Let me tell you that it's always about communication. Now, let me give you a couple of examples to make you understand why did I say that it's always about communication. All right, so let's say there's uh, a couple of scenarios. Uh, there's company number one and there's company number two. The company number one is a new company in the market and they come to you who's watching this video right now and say, hey, how about you set up a network for us? Can you please do that for us? So the question that should come to your mind is why do they want to set up a network in the first place? What purpose does it serve? Well, the reason why they want a network is because they want their devices to be able to communicate with each other. And how does that help? Well, with the communication, they would be able to share resources and information and even services. They will be able to enhance their efficiency. They'll be able to collaborate. They will be able to centralize the management and access to data applications and whatnot. A lot of stuff. Now, this is in terms of a new company when they do not have a network and they come to you and say that, hey, how about you, you know, help us out with the network. All right, in terms of the second company, there is already a network set up. You are their company's network administrator or your attack, you know, and you get a call from this customer stating that, hey, we have, a, uh, we have a network set up already there, but there's a problem. A user, let's say, is not able to communicate with a printer, for example. That is one of the scenarios. Or let's say the users, no user in the company is able to reach out to the internet, right? So there's a problem with, the communication. Yes, you got that right. Yes, in this case as well, we're looking at communication and your job would be to make sure that the communication is up. So you got to fix their problem. These are some of the networking devices that make up a network. We got the routers, we got switches. When it comes to routers, IP addresses should come to your mind. When it comes to switches, MAC addresses should come to your mind. We're going to talk about that later in detail. And then we got hubs, we got firewalls, we got access points, we got laptops, we got wireless controllers, we got servers, and so on. But we're going to focus mostly on routers and switches. When it comes to routers, Routers are used to forward data packets between different computer networks. When it comes to switches, these connect devices within a single network uh, using MAC addresses to forward you know, data to the correct destination. Then we got hubs. These are used to connect multiple Ethernet devices, making them act as a single network segment. We got firewalls. These are the security devices. And then we got the access points. These are used to uh, allow wireless devices to connect to a wired network using, for example, Wi-Fi, like your mobile phones. And then we got a laptops, you know what a laptop is. But as I said, we are going to focus on uh, routers and switches. And next, we're going to talk about router. Let's take a look at uh, an analogy to understand routers better. All right, let's say the guy on the left-hand side speaks only Chinese and the guy on the right-hand side only speaks Arabic. They won't be able to communicate because they only know their own languages. For example, the Chinese guy tells the Arabic guy, Ni hao ma. The Arabic guy is going to be like, what the heck did you just say to me? 
Or, on the other hand, the Arabic guy talks to the Chinese guy and says, habibi. The Chinese guy is going to be like, whoa, what was that? Right? So, in this case, who comes to the rescue? It is the router. Right, so what's the router going to be? The router, first of all, should understand Chinese as well as Arabic in order to be able to help these guys out right so the router knows chinese as well as arabic in this case and when the chinese guy wants to talk to the arabic guy sends over the data or the message or to the router and the router is then able to send it over to the arabic guy and the arabic guy is able to uh, understand and then the arabic guy uh, whenever the arabic guy wants to send back some data or some message to the chinese guy the Arabic guy sends it over to the router, and then the router sends it over to the Chinese guy, and therefore they're able to communicate with each other without any problem. That's what a router does, as simple as that. And uh, now, if there's still any confusion after this, we're gonna take uh, we're gonna talk more about it. So don't worry. Now we're gonna talk about switches. So let's say all these people work in your company in some department, let's say sales, and all of them speak the same language, let's say Chinese. Now they would be able to talk to each other without any problem, and they don't need a router in this case, right? However, in order for them to be able to talk to each other, you need to connect them. So you use a cable to connect this guy to this guy, and then a cable from this guy to this guy so that they are able to talk to each other, right? So that they are able to share information. And then this guy to this guy, but this guy needs to talk to this guy as well. And then this guy needs to talk to this guy as well. And then this guy needs to talk to this guy as well. And then this guy needs to talk to this guy as well. And the same goes for every other uh, person in this department, right? So this is a mesh, and this mesh is a mess. There would be a lot of cables and it is not feasible. You cannot have so many interfaces on a laptop, right? So who comes to the rescue? That is correct. It is the switches. So let's place a switch somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to remove all this mess. And there you go. All right, so let's place a switch in the middle. And let's connect uh, this employee to the switch, this employee to the switch. So there are two cables right now. Use three cables, four, five six seven and eight cables that's it all of these uh, employees would be able to talk to each other now uh compare this to the diagram that we saw before right that was a mess now in this case when you look at this diagram let me tell you that switches are not just used for connecting there's a lot to switches there's a lot of um you know logic that goes on behind forwarding traffic and whatnot and switches work on mac addresses and we're going to talk about mac addresses and ip addresses when we talk about uh, the osi model and the uh, tcp ip protocol suite however based on this diagram you should be able to tell that switches are devices that actually have a lot of ports because they're not just going to be eight employees uh, in your company right they're going to be a lot of employees therefore switches are devices that have a lot of ports now we're going to have a quick comparison between uh, switches and routers uh, let's go ahead and check that however let me tell you that we're going to go through a lot of details for switches as well as routers throughout this course so let's proceed there are a lot of differences between switches and routers however there are some common differences and simple differences that I've mentioned right here in front of you. I would recommend going ahead and making a note of these uh, differences or just taking a screenshot or whatever you prefer. So when we talk about a switch, these are some of the uh, switch models. We have the Cisco Catalyst 9000 series, Nexus 9000, and Meraki MS series, series switches. Nexus as well as Meraki, all of these, these are Cisco um, uh, branded switches right and then on the other hand you got routers these are cisco isr 4000 series asr 1000 series 8000 series all of these are cisco uh routers again these are some of the examples there are many other um switches and routers out there all right switches operate at data link layer in the osi model which is layer number two so layer number two in the osi model is called the data link layer on the other hand, routers operate at layer three, which is the network layer in the OSI model. When we talk about the OSI model, we're gonna talk about this in great detail. All right, so the switches use MAC addresses and VLAN configurations to filter out traffic. And on the other hand, you got routers that use IP addresses to go ahead and filter out traffic, and not just IP addresses, but other factors as well. But I'm trying to keep uh, things simple right now. 
And as I mentioned, we're going to talk about all of this in great detail and that when we jump to the packet tracer, we're going to talk about all of this uh, again, most probably the major parts at least, right? Uh, switches usually have uh, a lot of ports in them. You got 24 port switches, you got 48 port switches, you got modular switches as well, in which there are different, uh, you know, um, modules installed in a single switch you got layer two switches you got light, light layer three switches as well you got layer three switches as well so a lot of um you know models and uh, different switches out there uh, routers usually have lesser ports on them compared to switches obviously and then you have uh, uh, the switches they connect devices in the same network uh, we looked at an analogy before this right uh, and we explained it in detail and then you have uh, the routers that connect different networks we talked about this and discussed this uh, using an analogy as well all right so switches typically create one broadcast domain unless vlans are used and on the other hand you got routers that create separate broadcast domains for each connected network um, then you have uh, the switches these are generally easier to configure however routers are usually more complex to configure and you'll understand why when we uh, configure switches and routers um, in the packet tracer so we have a lot of a uh, lot of topics to cover we got uh, you know the osi model and the tcp ip we got the cables we got other stuff as well so a lot of theory uh, before we proceed to the packet tracer and try out some practicals but uh trust me we're gonna um you know take it bit by bit but at the same time uh, as i mentioned this is a crash course we're gonna take it um in an intense manner and uh yeah let's uh, let's try to make sure that we uh, cover as much as possible and uh, i would request uh you guys if you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel and share it with others as well and if you have any comments suggestions whatever you have just put it down in the comment section i'll be happy to help um yeah you take care and uh, let's proceed further